Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. Today we'll have a look at a write-up of a recent NMN human trial. This is interesting as it showed that 800 milligrams of NMN was able to lower blood pressure in people with hypertension in just six weeks. This is the paper, NAD exhaustion by CD38 upregulation contributes to blood pressure elevation and vascular damage in hypertension. It was in the Signal Transduction and Targeted Therapy Journal, which is published by Nature. Let's have a look at the details. Hypertension or high blood pressure is common with 8.5 million deaths a year from related causes. The state of the walls of the vascular system and its stiffness are key factors in high blood pressure. Providing NAD precursors has been shown to have improvements in vascular health in mouse models. But whether NAD precursors will help reduce blood pressure in people with hypertension has not been studied. In the study, they saw that hypertensive patients had lower NAD levels in blood cells and vascular lining. They found that boosting NAD with NMN reduced the blood pressure and ameliorated the vascular dysfunction. The reason for the low NAD appears to be excessive CD38, which consumes the NAD and the natural precursor NMN. CD38 itself was overexpressed because of interleukin-1 beta coming from inflammatory macrophages. Disabling CD38 genetically or chemically reduced blood pressure. Restoring the NAD with a precursor can be used as a therapy in hypertension. They first examined 102 patients, 52 who had just been diagnosed with hypertension and 50 who had normal blood pressure. The NAD levels in the PBMCs or peripheral blood mononuclear cells, which are white blood cells of the hypertensive group was 44% lower than that of the healthy individuals. However, there was no difference in any of the metabolites of NAD. The levels of NAD were inversely correlated with blood pressure, both systolic and diastolic. Also with vascular health, here FMD is flow-mediated dilation, where a higher number is more healthy, and BAPWV is brachial ankle pulse wave velocity, where a lower number is better. Both of these are measures of vascular health. They then initiated a randomized placebo-controlled trial to test whether augmenting NAD with a precursor would help reduce the blood pressure. The participants were diagnosed with mild hypertension, so with a blood pressure of 130 over 80 to 159 over 99, and ranged in age from 18 to 80. After screening, a total of 19 participants joined the trial, nine in the NMN group and 10 in the control group. Here the paper says the trial was 30 days, but in the rest of the document, they quote six weeks. So I think the time was probably six weeks. The NMN intervention was 800 milligrams once per day. And both groups had the same lifestyle advice around diet and exercise. For the trial results, the NAD levels in the PBMC increased by 43% compared to the lifestyle only group. They did also see increased metabolism in ATP production but it was not significant given the small sample size. Systolic pressure in the NMN group decreased from an average of 136.22 to 129.33, which was significant in comparison to the lifestyle only group. Diastolic blood pressure decreased from 82 to 79, but the gap with the lifestyle group was not significant. In the paper, they also measured many other biomarkers such as the lipid panel, fasting glucose, etc. There was no significant difference in any of these. FMD and PWV, the measures of vascular health, both improved more in the NMN group than in the lifestyle group. The rest of the paper looks at the mechanisms of action for these observed improvements. They checked the health of the endothelium of the aorta in the participants and in mice, where it was thicker in those with hypertension. And NAD was lower in a similar way to the white blood cells showing that the blood vessels themselves had the same issue with low NAD. They also confirmed that NMN rescued high blood pressure in a mouse model, though I will not go into the details of this. Looking for the cause of the reduced NAD, they examined the proteins that were expressed in the aorta 
and found that among the NAD consuming and producing enzymes, only CD38 was significantly different, where they saw a fourfold increase in the hypertensive patients. So the next question is, why is CD38 being upregulated? Hypertension is an inflammatory disease in which macrophages enter the vascular wall and release cytokines. So they check which of the common inflammatory cytokines promotes CD38 activation and found the most CD38 activation with interleukin-1 beta. Interleukin-1 beta was also present in a fourfold higher quantity in the aorta of hypertensive patients over controls. The authors investigated further to find the mechanisms by which interleukin-1 beta was causing the CD38 to be elevated, which I won't go into detail at the moment. Though one point they did find is that it appears that CD38 was expressed in the endothelial cells rather than in the macrophages, which they said was a little bit surprising. The actual study was very small, only 19 people yet it showed a significant decrease in systolic pressure from 800 milligrams of NMN a day. They also investigated the specific mechanisms and showed that low NAD levels caused by CD38 were a key part of the picture and that reversing them improved the blood pressure and the health of the vasculature. They also looked at CD38 knockout mice and showed that they were resistant to increase in blood pressure relative to wild type when this was induced in the normal way for a mouse model, all of which points to boosting NAD and inhibiting CD38 helping with endothelial health and reducing blood pressure. Thank you for your attention. I hope that you found the video helpful. I wish you all well and I will speak to you again soon.